So we are working on simplifying radicals that don't come out evenly. In the last video, we learned the good pi, bad pi method. And in this video, we're going to finish the last two examples that I introduced last time but did not get to. So let me walk through example two, since it has numbers and variables all in itself. And then hopefully you can try example three on your own. So example two, I'm going to go ahead and break it down into two square roots right away. The first square root is going to be my good pi, and my second square root is going to be my leftovers or my bad pi. Now, I do have numbers and two different variables in this example. I suggest you take it piece by piece. So let's just start with 75. Looking at my list of squares over here, I notice that 75 isn't on this list of squares which means it doesn't all go into my first root. But I can divide 75 by one of these squares evenly. And the largest one to do that is 25. So 25 times 3 gives me 75. And again, 25 is my good pi because it is a square. X cubed. Now, I'm trying to take the square root of x cubed, which means I need pairs of these. So the largest amount of x's that I can take out in pairs is two of them. And I actually put all two of them here. Now I know that I can simplify that, but I don't do that yet. I just break it down as to what goes in here and what is my leftovers. Well, if I have three x's and two of them go here, that means one of them is left over over there. Last but not least, I have four y's. I want to take out pairs of them. Well, since I have an even amount of them, that means it's all good pi. And again, notice I don't simplify anything yet. I just put them in there. Well, since it's all good pi, then that means I don't put anything over here on the right. Well, now it's time to bake my pi, as I call it, meaning now it's time to simplify that square root. And since it's all squares, that should all come out evenly. That's the reason you split it up in that format. So the square root of 25 gives me 5. The square root of x squared gives you x because the square and the square root cancels out. And the square root of y to the fourth gives you y squared because 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. And your bad pi or your leftovers, you just copy down. There's nothing that you can do with those. So that there is your final answer. So at this time, I suggest that you pause this video and see if you can do my third example by yourself. Now, example three is a little bit more complicated than the example one and example two that we saw here. And that's because we are trying to do a cube root as opposed to a square root like we saw in the last example. So if you tried to break it down using these numbers here, that doesn't get you any ground because, again, these are squares and we're trying to come up with cubes or cube roots of them. So I'm going to go ahead and break this down, but notice I'm looking for cubes, so don't forget to put those little threes there. Now, let me use the list of cubes. So, one cubed gives me one, two cubed gives me eight, three cubed is 27, four cubed is 64, and five cubed is 125. And 6 cubed is 2, 16. Again, the more numbers you have memorized on that list, the easier it's going to make your life. The less you have to plug into your calculator, and the more you just recite numbers that you already know. So I notice that 135 is not on this list, but what I want to do is try and divide 135 by the largest number. And the largest one that goes in here evenly from my cube list is 27. Because 27 times 5 gives me 135. Since 27 is a cube, that goes into my good pie. Since 5 is just my leftovers, that goes into my bad pie. 
All right, now my variables. Let's talk about m to the fourth. I have four of these m's, but I want to pull out groupings of three of them. So if I look, I can pull out three of these m's, or a m cubed, which means I have one m left over. Now my n's to the seventh. I'm going to write this out fully, but again, it's best if you can kind of skip this step. I have seven of them. I want to pull out groupings of three. So notice I have two groupings here, or I have six of them total that I can pull out. So really, what you want to do is pull out the largest multiple of three that fits in to your exponent in the first place. So six is the largest multiple of three that goes into seven which that means I'm left with one of these n's left over. Six here plus one there gives me seven total. So all of these numbers on my left should be cubes or they should be good pi, which means I can finally break down or simplify the cubes. The cube root of 27 gives me three, the cube root of m cubed gives me m, and the cube root of n to the six gives me n squared. And then my bad pi are just my leftovers. I just copy down to the next step. So my final answer here is 3mn squared times the cube root, and don't forget this cube here. That's a simple mistake a lot of students make. The cube root of 5mn. So now we know how to simplify roots that don't come out evenly using what I call as my good pie, bad pie method.